our God, it was an exclamation point. We weren't asking, we were proclaiming how great our God is. Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34, are verses in the Bible that are really pivotal for understanding God's dealings in salvation and saving people in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Those are the two divisions of the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. And it helps us understand God's terms for that love relationship that he has with people. So we're going to expound on, especially verse 34 today. How good is your memory? If I showed you this picture on the screen of this Scrabble board, okay, take 10 seconds to look at it, and then when we pull it down from the screen, how many of those words could you remember? All right, Mike, pull it back. All right, there we go. I'm, I won't even try you. But how about this? Uh, when, you, when you meet someone for the first time, then do you remember their name? Or when your wife or your mom send you to the other side of the house to get something, do you sometimes get to the other side of the house and then think, why am I here? Or if you're a mid-age like me, you open the refrigerator to get something, and by the time you're in the refrigerator, you're thinking, why did I go in the refrigerator? Uh, it, forgetting is easy. We don't have to try. We, just, we don't have to try to forget. Forgetting is easy. And then you have people who have great memories. They will, they will meet you, and whether it's six minutes or 60 days later, they'll remember your name when they greet you again. That's amazing. They, they, some people remember birthdays and anniversaries really well. I'm jealous of those people. Or they'll remember from ninth grade geography that the capital of Kenya is Nairobi. Very good, Andrew. Oh, <laughs> I, I, had to go, I had to Google that one. So forgetting is easy, remembering not so easy. Sometimes we can forget if we want to forget. Much like we can remember if we want to remember. If you want to memorize something, you can. If you put your mind to it, you can memorize something. Likewise, we can forget something too if we want. But what happens is that there are some things we just don't forget. And one of those things that we don't forget is when, when people or circumstances hurt us when there's pain. We tend to not forget that. Like, you can remember the exact parking spot and the, and the, the store that you are at when the guy in the pickup truck door dinged your car. You can remember the, the day. You can remember the smell of the cologne or the perfume of your sweetheart in high school who dumped you. We remember those things. You, you can remember the name of the real estate broker who messed up your deal. You can remember that. You can remember the pizza place that you called on Super Bowl Sunday, and they totally messed up your order. You were hosting a Super Bowl party, and you were counting on them for all the munchies, the pizza, the wings, everything, and they royally messed it up. They delivered it to the wrong house, and it ruined your Super Bowl party, and everybody thought it was a dud. And so now every time you hear the word pizza, or the name of that pizza place, or Super Bowl party, your, your nostrils flare, and your face turns red, and the hair stands up in your neck, and you just, ah, oh, because you, you don't forget that. Here's how it works in a marriage. She's been asking him for months to fix the toilet. And he nods and says, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And she's been asking nicely and asking nicely and asking nicely. And finally, she, she harasses and nags and says, please fix the toilet. And, uh, and he doesn't pay attention, he doesn't listen. And then so one day, she announces, I called a plumber who's going to come and fix the toilet. And this just assaults his manhood. He's, he feels hurt. He's full of pain. He's like, how could you do that? I'm the man of the house. I should be fixing the toilet. And, and so he gets angry on the inside. And he re retorts back to his wife. He says, fine, why don't you buy a new water heater while you're at it and put it on the credit card like you put everything else? Because he 
hasn't forgotten when she maxed out the credit cards and got them in a whole bunch of debt and trouble. And he zings this at her because he feels hurt. And he hasn't forgotten. And the sarcasm does its dirty work. That is how we tend to not forget when we've been hurt. And then sometimes it causes us to be ugly back. But like I said, we can forget. I've already shown how forgetting is easy, but it's not easy when we've been hurt. But it can be a choice. We can choose to forget. And that's what today is all about, choosing to forget. Uh, sometimes we forget because we choose to forget. Today, the, uh, Jeremiah 31 says that God forgets. Now, how is this possible? It's as difficult as it is for us to forget something that has hurt us, how can God, who knows all things, even before they happen, and remembers all things, how can God forget something? That's what we're going to look at today. And we're going to look at the one thing. There's only one thing that he forgets. He remembers everything else, but there's only one thing. I've got to tell you what that one thing is. The Bible tells us. I want to tell you about this guy I met in line at uh, waiting for a rental car. He was in line, and I, I kind of heard him sigh and groan a little bit. And he was probably a weary traveler, and so was I. And we were waiting in line. Uh, and so I tried to cheer him up a little bit, and I said, Hey, great day for a drive in our rental cars. He kind of sighed and moaned and said, uh, eh, I don't know, man. Life is tough, you know? I, yeah, I said, you know, I, that's the way life is. There's days like that. But I said, I think it kind of depends on on how we look at it. And I took out my, my sunglasses that I had waiting for getting in my rental car, and I put them on. I said, sometimes if we look through different glasses, we can see things a different way, like God's way. And now I wait. How is he going to respond? And then he, he quotes a Bible passage to me, he, like from the Old Testament, this vague Bible passage that I don't know. Like you, only, you, you only know if you go to the seminary or know your Bible. He knew this Bible passage. I was impressed. And then he followed it up by some pretty poor theology. He was obviously hurt and bad. And the Bible passage was, about having, it was from Ezekiel about having a new heart, a heart of flesh. And, and he said, uh, you know, I just, I just have a hard time seeing things God's way. I, I got to work on myself, man. I said, what does that mean? Well, you know, keep the commandments and, and do better. I, I just, man, I just got to do better, you know. But man, he said, that's hard. And we let that kind of just resonate in the air. And, and what came out of my mouth next was, I said, that's impossible. So much for cheering him up. <laughs> I said, it's impossible. And I let that hang for a while. And I said, that's why Jesus came. And he said, man, I just hope he comes back again soon. Kind of like, this life is worthless if we can just get over with this life and get on with the next one. And and I feel bad for this guy because he's believing a lie. He's believing a lie. And he's believing a lie about performance. That, that life, that living the good life is about performance. And if you perform well, you live well. If you, if you perform according to God's expectations, God will bless you in some ways. And it's about performance, and that's a big, big lie. And we get confused about that lie because there are some things in our society that are performance-based. In the NCAA tournament, if you don't perform well, you lose and you're done. At your tryout, your audition for the play, if you don't audition well, you don't get chosen. But programs like American Idol and The Voice, right? We see, we see performance-based results all the time in our world. 
They happen at your workplace. They happen at the kickball game in your neighborhood. They happen in your family when you hand out chores and, and discipline. It, it, it's valid. But it's not God's way. So when we believe this lie, when we when we see what's going on around us with performance-based results, and then we apply that to our relationship with God, it's not pretty. Because that, that lie wins. And that's why you feel miserable when you make a mess or a mistake. Because you're believing that lie. That's why we get def- defensive and dismissive when people rebuke or correct us. Because we're believing the lie of performance. That I have to perform perfectly to be right with myself and especially right with God. We believe in that lie. That's why some of us cuss too much and why some of us drink too much and why some of us eat too much. And it's why some of us need people in ways way more than we should really need them. And it's why some of us hurt people, and it's why some of us stay away from people. It's why some of us stay away from church. Because we're believing this nasty, ridiculous lie about performance. So that this, this lie was telling this man that I met, don't forget, don't forget, you can't forget. Make sure you remember, you got to remember, don't forget. Don't forget, you have to perform. Don't forget, you have to do this. Don't forget, you have to do that. Don't forget, you better not make a mess like you did last time. Don't forget, you got to be a better person. And all of a sudden, it's this overwhelming list and this pressure to perform. And like this guy knew, he knew it. You can't. You can't do it all. And God rescues us. That's the good news. First of all, I want you to understand how this lie works and how easy it is for all of us to believe and then how that manifests itself in our broken relationships and in our messes we make in our lives, all right? You can see that around you in your own world and in others' world who are close to you. And God's, God changes it all. He's, he's got the way out. And he describes it here in Jeremiah chapter 31. So he describes it in this context. In the Old Testament, there was an agreement or or terms of contract, so to speak, that God had as to how he dealt with his people, the Israelites, and how they dealt with him. And it was a two-way deal. It was a two-sided agreement, contract. Basically, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That was the agreement. God said, I have blessings in store for you, Israelites. If you do this, 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 then you will receive this, 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 and this. If you don't, you won't. That, that was the condition of the contract in the Old Testament. And there were a lot of things that the Israelites did not do, and God in his mercy still watched over them and blessed them in some ways, but they could have been blessed way more. God wants to bless his people more, and so he says, I will make a new covenant, he says in Jeremiah 31. It's new and improved, and I'm going to perform this upgrade and it's going to be this without take care of those bugs of, of people not being able to perform. And I want more blessings for my people, and they're going to come in a different way. And God upgraded the contract. And here are the words of the upgrade where he says, I will be their God, and they will be my people. You don't see conditions in these terms, do you? You don't see the word if. Well, if you behave, if you go to church every Sunday, if you give a certain amount of your income, and if you don't cuss, don't drink, don't swear, then there's, there's none of that in there. If you, you look pretty, and if you, you keep on your diet, and, and, and if your kids are perfectly behaved, you don't see it. It's not there. God says, replaces if blank, then blank, he replaces it with, I, God, will. 
blank check promise. No conditions. God in his love, in the strength of his love, says, here's the term of the contract. It's one-sided, and it's all on me, and I'm going to take care of it, and I'm going to be your God, and you're going to be mine. That's what he says at our our baptism. When we're baptized, it's a one-way promise from God saying, I'm your God now. I adopt you into my kingdom. Uh, And then he goes, they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. Uh, You can't be less than the least, and you can't be greater than the greatest. So what God is saying is that there's room for each of you in here somewhere. Each of you has a, no, no matter if you think you're the least or maybe second least, or you think you're the greatest or the second greatest, it does, every one of you is in that set of people from the least of them to the greatest, and God is saying this applies to you. It applied to the Israelites of old after he changed his covenant, but especially since Jesus came, now it applies to you. You are... God's saying you are in this promise from the least of them to the greatest. It's, it's yours. You're in there. And that's grace. So when we talk at Holy Word about our vision and we say we want to be a Christian community experiencing life together in the grace and peace of God, we are saying there's nothing more important in church than to make sure that each of you live every day in the grace and peace of God. There's nothing more, no activity at church, no meeting, no building projects, no budget, nothing is more important. And we want to use everything else to make that possible. When you believe in grace, then you live in peace. Because you you live understanding that peace is not a place. the Bahamas. You can have chaos there. Peace is not a place. Peace is not a performance. Like I'm only at peace if I score a perfect 10. Not in God's world. Peace is putting on the sunglasses, putting on God's glasses and seeing things God's way. I I love seeing those Facebook posts once in a while. I'll I'll see, uh, even some of you moms, I've seen post things like this where where busy, overwhelmed, stressed out moms will post this on Facebook. And the message is basically this. Hey, world, I'm a mom. And sometimes my kids get out of control. And sometimes my kitchen is messy. And sometimes I don't get to the laundry. And sometimes I don't have supper ready. And sometimes I'm out with the car and I door ding it on a post in the parking lot. And I I don't have it all together. And my life can look like a mess. But that's okay. I love that. That's living in peace. That's saying, I may be the least prepared, the least successful laundry woman, right? The least... That's it, but it's okay. I'm in, I'm in there. I'm in that, uh, God's grace, and, and that's living in peace. Um, that is not just a Facebook post, but that's real forgiveness, real forgiveness. And so that, that, there's a reference I want to give you right now. If you have your Bible app or your Bible along, um, look this up. Um, this is a great verse where, where Jesus promises us this peace. It's in Matthew 26, verse 28. And uh, this is when he's giving the, the Lord's Supper, uh, when he's instituting it. We covered this in communion this morning with our people. And he's, he, he calls his forgiveness a contract, a covenant. He said, this is my blood of the covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin." Jesus considers his forgiveness to you, his job, and it cost him his blood, not your performance. It's a done deal. You have the grace of God by what Jesus has done. It's all done. That's just a great verse. This is top ten Bible verses. If you're memorizing Bible verses, this is Jeremiah 31, 34. And this is now God telling you the one thing he forgets. 
I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins. I'm going to tell you a story now. It's not a true story. It's made up, okay? It's a kind of a parable, but it makes a point about a truth. Here it is. There were, there were two gals. They were friends. One of the gals insisted that she talks to God, that she talks to Jesus, and she can hear him, and that he speaks to her. And the other was a little skeptical. I, you don't talk to Jesus. He, we read his word, and he, we grow through that. I don't believe that you talk to Jesus. She said, really, I do. I, I, I talk to Jesus. And her skeptical friend said, all right, prove it. The next time you talk to Jesus, you ask him what sin I struggled with in my youth. Okay. So this gal talks to Jesus, comes back to her friend and says, yeah, I talked to Jesus again. You, you did. Okay, well, prove it. You tell me. Did you ask him what sin I struggled with in my youth? Yes, I did. What did he say? Well, I asked him. I said, what, what sin did my friend Rita struggle with in her youth? And he paused. And he rubbed his chin. And he said, I don't remember. You are forgiven. God forgets your sinful messes and mistakes, your sinful foolishness, whether it was when you were 16 years old or 16 days ago. It is not in God's black book. It is not in a journal or a calendar. He's not going to needle you with it or bring it up when you make him mad because it's gone. It's covered by the blood of Jesus. So my question of you, can you forget? God's let it go. Can you? And he's also let go the sins and the mistakes and the messes of and the foibles of the people you live with that are closest to you, the people who have hurt you, can you let them go too? It's hard, I know. Forgetting is hard, especially when we've been hurt. But it's a choice. God makes the choice. He knows everything. He has to choose to forget. And he says, I don't remember. One more story. And this shows how this, how this works in your real life, okay, and how it works with other people. When you're living in grace and peace, their son was making some wayward choices. He wore black lipstick, tattered and torn jeans with these boots that kind of had heel things on them and some chains and he had big skull rings ten rings on each one on each of his fingers and for extra credit one in his nose and had hair that was jet black and in this weird hairstyle and and his parents didn't know if he was trying to be hipster Harley or homosexual and you know what he didn't know either He had bounced around for two years after high school, wasting away two years, not headed to college. He had bombed at different jobs, in and out, pizza delivery boy, McDonald's, odd jobs for odd people, and lived at places that don't have a street address. He showed up once in a while at his parents' home, usually when he wanted something. And he even came to church once in a while, not with them, but he would eventually sit by them, and then the questions came.
His parents did something incredible. And here's what, what's incredible. They made a choice. They made this incredible choice to forget. They forgot his waywardness and his stupidity and his foolishness. They forgot his choices that aren't necessarily sinful but are different than theirs. They forgot his, his struggle and his lostness. And they remembered only one thing, that he was their son. And they didn't demean him. They didn't despise him. They didn't speak in terms to their friends trying to excuse his different look and behavior. They told him they were proud of him when he'd come to their house for dinner and say nice things like, I love you, Mom and Dad. They tried to mentor him in his spiritual life, and he was all weird about that, but they expressed their gratitude when, when he would respond. That choice, that incredible choice that they made about their son, it freed him. And it freed them, too. That's the power of forgetting. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, you know and remember all things. It, it's just amazing. We can't comprehend even a fraction of the amount of the things you know. Uh, multitudes, multitudes more than the entire internet. You know it all. It's at your fingertips. So we thank you for making a choice about us. Making a choice to forget what we've done wrong. To forget our failures. To forget the times that we sin again and again. And we tell you that we won't. Lord, by the power of your grace, help us to forget that too. So that we can live amazing lives for you. Freed from guilt and from shame and from ourselves and living to please you and to give you all that we are because you've freed us by your grace.